Hello and welcome to the 3000 subscriber special, a video that I literally just made up last night because a few of my videos have been getting copyright claimed and monetized. I'm not really sure exactly what's happening to them, but they are being claimed for an old outro I use. I'm gonna touch on that very, very briefly and then get into tips for starting a channel because it's something that really there's not enough people talking about starting. A lot of people go straight into it and usually it's a lot of money spent or these giant studio lights with this studio camera. And I wanted to touch on the simpler things for people that just wanna start doing what I do here with my phone recording, which is what I use to record all of my videos shorts. I have not owned a camera in potentially forever. I don't remember ever owning a camera. And especially with just hitting 3,000 subscribers, which first off, thank you all so much for helping support the work I do on the channel because it is fun, it is hard work, but at the end of the day, it's also it's also really, really cool to see just what you can build with Lego bricks, like this subscriber counter that I always have just on the shelf behind me in front of the Moldy Members board. I do have a few bullet points on the screen, but I'm mainly looking over at the subscriber count because currently, we're on 2,999 subscribers, so technically we haven't even hit 3K yet, but it's just a matter of time before we do, and you'll probably end up getting my live reaction here during the video. But back to what I was saying about my videos. Recently, when my videos, my older videos, is, is hit about 1.5K views and have earned a couple of quid, they start getting claimed, and if you are new to the channel and haven't seen my old, old videos, we're going back about a year. The outro uses a tune, which is one of the ones that YouTube supplied. If I was doing it now, I'd probably have given credit anyway. I can't find the name of the song that I used, but I used a little snippet. I think it was like five, six, seven seconds, and that was all fine at the time, but recently, as my videos have been getting a bit more traction, they've started being claimed. I have used this for months when I was starting out, and at the time it was really, really cool. Now I don't have an outro because I feel like when the video ends, it ends. It's better to click off and watch another video than wait a total of 10, 15, 30 seconds sometimes until the next one plays. I like the smooth transition a bit more, and you'll notice also with my videos, that I try to have very few ads, if any ads, if the video is only 10, 15 minutes long, I won't put any ads throughout the whole video. Now, I know YouTube does put ads when I don't. So if it is a bit longer than that, I tend to put an ad in the middle just to stop YouTube littering the video with ads because it really does hurt the viewing experience. But recently, the videos getting claimed have had as little as 500 views and I'm noticing there's a few videos that I really did enjoy and they're only sitting on about 60, 80 views. They're not being touched. It's no worries if it's 100 views or under, but it's the ones that are getting views that are suddenly popping up after all this time that aren't being claimed, which fair enough, you know, they do want to earn a bit of money off their music and what better way than targeting videos that use it as an outro. So today, I'm gonna to be spending the rest of the day after this video going back and muting all of my old outros. So it's also very handy that it's quite a quick, simple video that I'm recording. But there is really nothing simple about starting a YouTube channel. I started off making TikToks, and I mean, they were about a minute or so long, and it was just set the camera up, record the Funkos that I'd got recently, and that, was it. This is a bit more, you have to check the lighting beforehand, you have to check the cameras in focus and the mic is on and I really hope that all three of them are because I have tried this twice now, third time lucky, but the best thing you can do is just start. Sometimes if the video doesn't seem to be going your way, if you haven't got the light in the perfect angle you want it to be, if you haven't got your camera perfectly focused, if the mic isn't working, the best thing to do is just start and then worry about it later. You can spend too much time worrying about these sort of things and trying to over prep for a video and then in the end the video doesn't come out perfectly because not all videos do come out perfectly. In fact most videos aren't perfect. It's how you edit it, what you cut away. Sometimes I will have hours worth of footage and I'll cut it down into a 10-20 minute video. Especially with looking at new sets I do need to waffle on a bit more but I go on so many different tangents in videos and the most, and for the most part, 
they are all cut out because they make no sense to the original content. But to help with these longer recording sessions, I also record ahead. I tend to pair up my shorts. I mentioned it recently. Some shorts, especially if they do link to a video like my recent chess video that I did, I did need to record that short after the video. But my minifigure series, I'm actually starting to record in triplets rather than pairs. So you'll see, usually three of them will pair up. However, I don't usually edit them in pairs. So sometimes the editing can be a little different. And this also helps with taking breaks. You definitely need to take breaks in your schedule. It's the next bullet point. We'll get onto that in a minute, but you need to have a day where you can just relax, empty your mind of recording, editing, and just have a bit of downtime between a busy schedule. I'm lucky enough to have the time to post daily videos here on the channel and also make shorts on top of that and community posts and different polls and run a channel discord which isn't too hard at the minute but as that grows that will use a lot more time also maintain a bricklink store which is still in its early stages so again that is quite easy at the minute i also post occasionally to other platforms though i tend to stick mostly here on youtube and what does help is all the ideas that i have that i want to get out and that links to the next bullet point about don't post daily. Honestly, unless you have too many ideas to post every couple of days, which is why I shifted into daily uploading. Originally, I uploaded really whenever I had a video. And then as I started snowballing from Star Wars into Lego content, I started uploading more frequently. At first, it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and that very quickly become Monday through to Friday. So five days a week. And then I started pre-recording videos for the weekend as well, which tended to be a different style of video. I think especially early on in the Lego videos, they were the Star Wars content and at least one of them would be Star Wars. And then I typically have some weekly videos like a rumors and releases, which I've now split into a rumor slash leak video and a release video every single month. The first day of the month for the releases and the last Tuesday of the month for the rumors. That is every single month. But I think more important than a consistent upload is what the actual video is based around. If you are making something up just to fill a gap and try and get a piece of content out, everyone's gonna recognize that that's not exactly something you wanna be doing. So I have stripped it back to just doing my ideas. The only problem is I have so many months worth of ideas and a lot of them ideas don't make it. Don't use every idea because some ideas aren't gonna perform as well as the others. And that's not in terms of statistics and money or views or subscribers. That's just a case of you getting that idea across. Some ideas I've looked at and gone now I have a way too big for where I'm at right now. Although I have promised a minifigure scale Star Destroyer 100K sub, so I'm not quite sure that excuse does float with some of these ideas, but some of them, I just don't have the parts to build right now, or perhaps my channel isn't the right place to be posting it and I'm leaving it for someone else to do. And there's a lot of different ideas that have come and gone. Some of them, if they do keep coming back, I do jot down just for when we're at them later stages, a bit similar to the minifigure scale Star Destroyer, which was quite heavily requested a few months ago. So I said, you know what? I'm not ready for it now, but 100K subs, we'll see what we can make happen. And that is a really big task that one day I will have to face. I have said it in countless videos. I've made the promise on my channel. I even added it to my bio and my channel trailer. So one day there will be a minifigure scout Star Destroyer. I've already talked about roughly how big that will be and that will change with how much size we have but there is a minimum of eight by three meters which actually beats the world record for the largest Lego Star Wars ship ever built. On top of not having the ideas, if you don't upload daily, you can also put more effort into advertising it, which a lot of channels that grow faster, I think it does actually hinder my channel specifically because it allows your video to get to a wider audience. Now, that being said, I do have a few videos that have been pushed out to a couple tens of thousands of people. Likewise, there is a short that is slowly sneaking up on a million views. So it doesn't completely stop it, but definitely if you're not uploading as much, it just gives the algorithm more time to work and train on a specific video and cater the audience. And hopefully that does correlate with a rise in views, subscribers and everything else that comes with it. And to hammer home the point about getting time off, even if you're not recording for daily uploads, 
you still got to think about the time it spent for you to build whatever it is you were going to be showing off then to get it to record if the video don't go well you could record it a few times and only end up using the last cut and then you've also got to edit it. I edit all my videos and I think a lot of people do nowadays because it helps to get the video across the way you designed rather than having to pay someone else and hope that they can pull it off. And if you wanted to take it a step further, you've also got the advertising. A lot of people make shorts to link to their videos. I tend to use shorts as a way to promote my shorter ideas after all, it is called short. So we've got the minifigure series that is still running. I think we're like halfway to 100 at this point. So we should be hitting 100 towards the end of the year, if not at the start of next year. It would be great if we can hit it at the end of this year. And then next year, I guess 200, 300, only time will tell. But because a lot of the time I am either recording footage or editing at least a short seven days a week, I tend to have a slow day where I've just got a few shorts to edit or where I've just got the end of a video that needs finishing. And that helps to break up every week if you have a slow day where you just need to spend two, three hours on videos. It does also feel like a day off because I can get so much done around it. And then every month I try to have a weekend where I can just put my phone down. So if you aren't getting a response for a couple of days, chances are that's the weekend I have off. And I think this is really important for your mental well-being as well as physical getting out exploring the world touching grass and all that but mentally i think it is a lot of stress trying to make record and edit videos day in day out and a lot of content creators do just stack up videos they will record three or four in a day have a few days off and go back to bulk recording but personally I don't think that works as well because when I was stockpiling the videos, when I was first doing my Lego videos, you could tell which videos were the second ones to be recorded because there just wasn't as much energy in the videos. And sometimes like today, I'm not feeling as energetic anyway. So if I was to record a second video after this, it'd probably seem a bit slower and a bit more at a relaxed pace compared to some of my other videos, which aren't necessarily the most energetic things to watch but i can definitely tell there's a bit more energy put into them now than there was say about a year a year and a half ago and maybe that's just because i know how much energy goes into these videos i don't know if it comes across on camera but hopefully it does and you enjoy the videos a bit more than you did a year ago now i've got this one in caps bold letters make mistakes and i'm not telling you to make big ones don't go out there and absolutely destroy your chances of growing your channel but except you'll make mistakes along the way and that you can then fix that in your later content. If something goes wrong in a video, I don't try to edit it out or go around it, especially recently. I've got a bit more comfortable with some camera shakiness because my hands are not steady whatsoever or if I have a little stutter during a video. I keep it in because it's not the end of the world. Videos don't have to be perfect and sure I could reshoot the entire thing but as long as I'm keeping it in mind when I'm recording videos later on and I think recently there was a video where I was talking very very quickly and it was very very hard to edit and piece it all together so today i am probably talking a bit slower than that making sure my words come out how they are meant to i know because of the way i say things certain words like ship do come out a bit dodgily on camera but sometimes it cannot be helped as long as when you're recording the next video You've got these things in mind and you can keep them at the back of your head, making sure you are striving just to be better with every recording. There's not really much more you can be doing. Now, the next few bullet points are Lego specific. So if you aren't planning on recording Lego videos, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on your way out. But chances are you're here for the Lego side of YouTube rather than just tech tips because it's not exactly what my channel's known for. And the first tip that I cannot stress enough is to part out models and don't always buy new sets, especially if you're trying to start off your channel. Lego is expensive and I do understand why it's better to get the box fresh from Lego from other retailers, especially if there's some sales running and have the whole unboxing experience, the instructions in hand. And especially if the set comes with stickers, it's not as easy to get your hands on them when the set is first out but a lot of sets you can build just by parting out in fact i do have the death star promo and i don't have the black dish at the bottom 
But from the top, that's the only piece that you can see. Now the inside of this is filled with a bunch of color swaps, not because I don't have them necessarily, but also because I don't have enough of them and black, light bluish gray, dark bluish gray, and also some of these sandy colors are very, very common in my collection. You can thank Star Wars for that. But I also don't have this gray dish on the bottom. So I've used a similar piece that you can't tell the difference from the top. And honestly, you could probably just leave it out entirely. It's not too important to the build. You could definitely include a two by six round plate instead, which is much cheaper and I have plenty more of them. So this is just one example of a set that you can part out and I did buy the plaque previously on Bricklink and it only cost me one, two quid, I think. It wasn't that expensive. But you could also just leave it out and find ways around it. Either print off a sticker if you do have access to a printer and some sticker paper, or you can just leave it out completely. Just have the stalk of the Death Star and it won't look like the new set, but as long as you've still got all the other features and hinges present, you can still do a video reviewing it. You just got to make it clear that that is not the official set and that you've pied it out instead. I think I did this with the Mandalorian N1 when that come out because I already had Mando, I already had Grogu. There's not much point buying a micro fighter other than that, but I really wanted to build one of the mock builds that I'd seen on Rebrickable. And I also reviewed that here on the channel. But before we get to that, I've just seen we've hit 3,000 subscribers. So it's honestly crazy to be here because only four months ago, I think, we hit our first thousand. So once again, thank you all for supporting the channel, subscribing. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe and drop a like on the video, though. If you've made it this far, I'm sure you already have. Back to the Mandalorian N1. I reviewed the set and the custom mock build without even purchasing the Lego set itself. So that not only saved me money, but then if you do end up getting a few thousand views on the video, that's money you can put away to then buying another set to review, which is what I'm hoping all the reviews here on the channel are. I've gone back and reviewed a few older sets already in my collection and any sort of money I get from them videos is just going to be saved up to spend on another Lego set down the line. So be sure to go back and watch them if you want to see more new sets on this channel. I also mentioned with the Death Star about using alternate elements and the best part of this is using different colors especially if the pieces are hidden. Certain model makers will use red for the interior and allow you to change that to whatever color you have which I'm slowly starting to pick up on my own models. But speaking of the Mandalorian N1, there was a Technic piece, which was basically a two by four or two by six plate with two Technic bricks with the axle hole in the middle, centered in the one by two brick. And it was a new element at the time or fairly new, newish element at the time. And it could be built with the three pieces I mentioned, plate at the bottom, two Technic bricks, and you've got that new element. So sometimes rather than paying for this new element that's come in only one, two or a handful of sets, it is a lot easier, cheaper and saves waiting for that piece to be delivered in the first place. If you just go to your parts bin and see if you can build that or something similar. If it's a brand new slope element, is there one that already exists that might be in your collection? And when you've got a collection as big as mine, which it's not massive, it is only these five units because this is for Bricklink exclusively, but it is still quite a sizable collection. I'm sure there'll be some piece that you can replace it with and make it look just as good, if not better, for some models. The next bullet point I've got just says be a part of the community. And I think what I was getting at with this is few creators try to separate themselves from the Lego community, which if you're making Lego videos, it's a very hard thing to do because we're all part of one massive community. We all love Lego. And the best way to be successful in the community is to work with other creators and other members of the YouTube community. I'm sure a few of you I know have seen me on other channels leaving comments and not expected me to be there. But I do like watching other people's Lego videos because it does help to fill the gaps between making my own and especially when I'm building things like My Lego City, you'll sometimes see a podcast from Shy Time Is My Time or you'll see Brixie working on his Lego City or another big Lego creator. Not only do I enjoy their content, so definitely check them out if you haven't already. Recently, I included 24 of the Lego creators that I do watch 
in one of my, I think it was a Q&A video, oh, and a lot of you spotted some people that you also watch. So we'll probably bump into each other in the comments section. But the big point of this bullet point is that the LEGO community has existed before you've started the channel. If you haven't started one at this point, and chances are for most of us that already have channels and different social media platforms, the LEGO community does also outdate us. So there's no point trying to fight the current. We just got to go with the flow quite literally and accept that we are part of a wider community that doesn't always get along. You won't always find people that enjoy your content, but a lot of people that come in and start bashing LEGO for one reason or start bashing some other custom bricks companies don't tend to be the ones that are first off happy with what they do. A lot of times controversy does equal views, but I feel when it comes to Lego long term, it's not really a great way to try and start an account and make a name for yourself just by picking a few fights with certain groups in the community. It really only puts you on the back foot because the community is very inclusive. Instead, what you can do is actually support your opponents in a way. I'm not saying make an enemy out of everyone else that makes Lego videos. You are on some level competing with everyone else that has made a Lego video. And it's not a harsh competition. It's like a friendly competition. You always wanna better yourself and always wanna do better than the next. And I'm sure you'd also want the next person to then do better because that also strives you to make better content. And the only actual enemy you could have on YouTube is the algorithm. You see a lot of times in LEGO people trying to get out reviews first because they will be the most clicked and get the most views. People also try and up their budget or up the size of different builds to get the best out of it. But at the end of the day, if the content you're making isn't making you happy, chances are it's not making many other people happy too. And just because a video's got a load of views doesn't mean it's performed well because if people aren't watching, YouTube is less likely to recommend your future videos. So make sure you're making content that you enjoy. I always watch back my videos most of the time, at least. If you spot a mistake, there's a solid chance I have sat through it, watched it after editing and still missed it out. Like with my rumors video where I read out 2024, it sounded right to me. I saw it on screen and didn't question the fact that next year is in fact 2025. So thank you so much for pointing that out in the comments. But before I make a review on a video, I go back and all the land members reviews, I make sure I watch a few of them. Sometimes there'll be a bit of information that has come with the set that has come from a designer interview that I wouldn't have even thought of and would be great to include in the video. Of course, if you are doing that, make sure to reference where you got it from, but it's always handy to see the extra bit of information that you perhaps haven't thought of that's come from the designer or from the Lego group trying to promote this set early and you can then use in your own video. Hopefully this video has been informative enough for you to get a little bit of information and to help you make videos. If it has, definitely let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you all for 3,000 subscribers. I guess next stop is 4,000. Can we hit it next month? That would be amazing. But let's aim for 4,000 by Halloween because I know we can definitely get that done. And check out all videos on screen now, especially this one that YouTube thinks you'll like. And may the bricks be with you always.